Hey guys, welcome back to Doing It DIY. If you're new here, my name's Allison. Welcome. I can't wait for us to DIY together. Today I have four super easy Dollar Tree Valentine's Day DIYs that I hope you're going to love. Everything you need to complete these DIYs is in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get into the first project. The first project is actually three projects in one. We're going to make three DIY Valentine's Day printables and also two DIY frames. I'm going to show you how I did the printables first so you can make them if you want to. We're going to need a five by seven frame from the Dollar Tree, an eight by 10 canvas from the Dollar Tree, some tumbling tower blocks, and these three printables. If you want to follow how I did them, I'm gonna show you in just a second, or you can create your own, it's totally up to you. I have a Mac, so I'm going to show you first how I did it in pages. I just went in and typed this out, and I used Times New Roman font and 100 point for the size. Super easy, deleted the last O from the second to last line, <laughs> that was a mouthful. And now we're gonna do this one and we're just gonna go in and click on shapes and type in heart. There we go. And we're just gonna move it around so that we can adjust it. And we're gonna go ahead and adjust it to the size that we want. You can change the color to type February 14th. We're just gonna double click in the middle and type FEV.14. I again use Times New Roman font, and I believe for this one I use 75 point font. It's super easy, and I made it white. In a second, I'm gonna show you how I did it on Canva as well for those of you who don't have a word processing program that you can use. And for this one, I just typed out hugs and kisses and Valentine's wishes. The font that I used is called Today Easter from Defont.com. It's in the description box. And I used 85 point font and changed kisses to red, super easy. And now on canva.com, we're gonna go in and click worksheet because it's the same size as a printer sheet of paper. And to do the XOXO, we're just gonna click on text and then add a heading and type out XOXOXOX. And then we're gonna move that to where we want it. And at this point, we're going to highlight the text and change the font to Times New Roman. You can do any size you want, any font you want. This is just what I chose to do. And then we're gonna click those two little boxes up in the right-hand corner and duplicate this. And then because I only wanted five lines, I'm going to highlight and delete the last line of text. And then we're going to go to the O, the last O, and the second to last <laughs> line of text and delete that and make sure we go ahead and space it out so that we do have the space where the O was. Super easy. Print it out. For the second one, we're going to go in and click on Elements, and then we're going to go to Shapes, and we're going to scroll down until we find the heart. And then you can make it whatever size you want. To change the color, click on that little box up in the top left corner. If you don't see the color you want, just type in red, blue, whatever you want, and you can change it there. And then we're gonna go over to text, add a heading, and delete what's there. And then again, type in FEB 14th. And this we're also going to change the font to Times New Roman, so just highlight that. and we're also gonna change it to white. I didn't show the last one because it's the exact same process, but there we are, super easy. You can do this. If you don't wanna use these images, you can find something online to print. It's really easy, I promise. So for our frames, this is the materials we're going to use. We're doing two DIY frames and one ready-made frame. And we're also gonna use some poster board not poster board, foam board from the Dollar Tree. And some of these felt stickers, I use the double hearts and just cut off one of the hearts because we're gonna put that in the place where we deleted that. Oh, it's a sticker, we just plop it right on there. Boom, done. I love how that one turned out, it's so cute. So we're gonna take white paint, this one that I used was Snow White from Apple Barrel, 
and we're going to take Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral and paint that frame and give it a little distressing. Not sure why I skipped around here, but then I took some Mod Podge and attached the OXOX to the foam board. I will say that for this particular image, it worked fine for the others that did wrinkle. So I ended up, you know, having to use regular glue for the heart and for the hugs and kisses and Valentine's wishes. I actually just put that in a ready-made five by seven frame. So we didn't need to attach it to the foam board at all. I'm not sure what I was thinking in this clip, but there you go. So if you find you have a hard time with the Mod Podge, you can definitely use regular glue. I wouldn't use hot glue, but regular glue did work. And then you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Now we're going to take some of those tumbling tower blocks that I have painted white and we're going to pretty heavily distress them with the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. And then I'm also going to take some chocolate bar from Apple Barrel and do the exact same thing. And we're going to use the same combination of paint and paint to distress on all three frames. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a cohesive vibe between the three. And then you're just going to take those tumbling tower blocks and glue them right onto the foam board and the printable. And you want to leave a little bit of room around the printable with the foam board so you have room to glue the frame to it. And then you can always just take your X-Acto knife and trim it up just like I'm showing you here. If you find that it's too much white, you can forgo the white paint and do something else for the frame on all three of these. But I ended up liking it and then I didn't find it to be a problem. And then I'm just going to take some jute twine and some hot glue and a little bit of craft paper and make a hanger on the back of the February 14th sign. Photo? What should we call it? I'm going to call it a sign. I call everything a sign. No worries. And then I found these adorable rose felt roses at the Dollar General that I had to use in something. So I just decided to put it right in the corner and I love the way it turned out. We're going to go to the frame from the 8x10 canvas. You want to remove the canvas and then we painted it white. I used that Apple Barrel Snow White and then I'm taking some Waverly Chalk Paint and Mineral and Apple Barrel Chocolate Bar and just going around and distressing them the same way I did with the Tumbling Tower Blocks and then I'm just going to glue it directly onto that XOXO printable. This is super easy. I wanted something that was more classic Valentine's Day that anybody could do. If you have a printer, you can do this. And then again, with the jute twine and the craft paper, we're just going to go ahead and attach that directly onto the back of the photo. And then I didn't show this being painted white, but it's the exact same process. This is the five by seven frame. And then you're going to take that insert frame from inside and trace around your printable. And I found these cute little glitter lips that I thought added just a little something fun to it. So I put one of those on it. And then I'm going to take that inside frame and some jet black paint from Apple Barrel and just paint it just to break up the white. It turned out to be a little bit too much white with that in there as it was. So then we're just going to put them all back inside the frame. And you don't need to put a hanger on this one because it's already a frame. And that's it. This is super easy. I did use some tape to hook the frame around the printable just so it didn't move when I put it inside the frame. And there you have it. Super easy. I love the way it turned out. You can display them all together like I did or you can display them separately. It's a super easy way to display these for Valentine's Day. I thought they were cute. I love them. I hope you guys do too. And now for our second project. I love this so much, but I'm not sure what to call it. I'm not sure what to call it, whether a wall hanging. We'll just call it a wall hanging. We're going to use a platter from the Dollar Tree. This is from Christmas. And I first started out by painting it white. And then I decided that I wanted to do faux galvanized steel. So I went ahead and painted it gray. I used Apple Barrel Elephant Gray. And then I'm just going to take a foam brush 
and some folk art metallic gunmetal gray and just stipple it all around, making sure some of that gray comes through. We don't want a solid coverage with this gray. And then after this, I did use sterling silver as well in the exact same way, but that footage got lost. So use your imagination, same exact process, different color. And then I had this X and O from Decor from years and years ago. You can tell, I don't know what I was thinking with the black and white and gold, but it is what it is. I went ahead and took some crimson paint from Waverly and gave it a few coats. You can find these wooden letters sometimes at the Dollar Tree. I know my Walmart has them, Hobby Lobby has them, Michaels, even the Dollar General does have them as well. So you can find them everywhere if you wanna go ahead and do this project. Mine are a little big for the tray, but I actually like it that way. So we're just gonna give it a couple coats. We are going to heavily distress this. So if you find these letters and they're just solid wood with no paint, you might not need to paint them as many times as I did. And we're just gonna start with that Apple Barrel Snow White and a dry brush and very heavily distress them. Super easy. I don't usually distress this much when I'm doing a project, but I love the way that it turned out with this particular project, especially against the faux galvanized still. I thought it looked so cute. We're gonna repeat the exact same thing again with the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral, and then again with Apple Barrel chocolate bar. And I did go a little crazy with the chocolate bar, and I, I was scared for a second, but in the end, I really liked the way it turned out. And then I'm just going to take these two different colors of ribbon. They both came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut them in, I don't know how long they are. I did not measure them. In the description box, I'll put the measurement. But I cut each one of them in four pieces. We're going to make another crude bow because, like I said, I'm really bad at bows, but I love the way this turned out. And I'm not sure it would actually qualify as being a bow, but I think it's cute. That's what I'm going to call it. And we are just going to alternate directions and the ribbon, the different pattern ribbon until we're finished all the way until you have them all on here. I wasn't sure what I was trying to say, but you guys get the picture. You can see what I'm doing. And then we're just gonna take some jute twine and wrap it around our hands. I did about six times and then slide it off and cut another small piece of jute twine and we're gonna take that and tie it in a knot in the middle. We're making a little rustic bow and I think it looks so cute on top of this flared out bow. It's, I love it. This is my favorite thing about this wall hanger. This is when I, I didn't like it all the way to the end until I saw this on it and then I really, really loved it, so. And just put that on with some hot glue. It's so cute, I love it. All right, then we're just gonna take a little bit of the chocolate bar paint. Again, we used way, um, folk art, metallic, sterling silver for the second layer. I just lost that footage. But we're gonna rust it up a little, faux rust with some chocolate bar from Apple Barrel and just a cosmetic sponge here and there, wherever you think it might naturally be rusted. And then I'm going to attach my letters. And because we are overlapping the letters, we're going to use a few of the Tumbling Tower blocks. I did end up painting those red because you can see them a little bit. But we're just going to put those Tumbling Tower blocks in a few different places so that the letters are both even and they're not sinking in and they're not all wonky. And then just directly glue them straight onto the platter or the tray. And we're gonna do the same thing with the O. And I realize my letters are a little bit big, but I like the way that they kind of take up the whole tray. I think it's cute in the end. If you wanted to use smaller letters, of course you can do that. Totally up to you, make it your own. 
And then to attach the letters, we're just gonna put a little bit of hot glue only in the places where it's going to touch the tray. That's why I went ahead and traced it so I knew exactly where to glue. Super easy. And when the light hits this, it totally looks like real metal. It, it honestly does. I'm shocked by how how great the faux uh, galvanized still turned out on this. And there we go, easy, easy, easy. And you can see that the little bit of white was peeking through, so I went ahead and painted that red so it kind of just blended into the letters. And then we're going to take our little bow and attach it onto the O. I kind of wanted to do it off center so that you could see the whole thing and it was spread out. If I put it at the top of the tray, it kind of flapped down in the back and I wanted to be able to see the whole thing. So that's why the placement of my bow is not at the top. And I thought it was cute the way it turned out. And then I thought it needed a little something. So I had these wood beads that I got from the Dollar Tree that I had painted cream color and I painted them that crimson red from Waverly. But then I thought that they were too bright, you know, in contrast to the distressed red on the X's and O's. So I went ahead and used the same distressing that was on the X's and O's on those beads. And in the end, it really worked. It really gave this something extra. And I used the beads as a decoration, not as a hanger. You could, but when you attach them, you're going to have to make sure that you make sure that they are hooked on very strong. I just hot glue them at the top on the back so that they can be seen and it's more decoration. And then we're going to use some nautical rope as a hanger. Again, if you're going to use these as the hanger, then make sure that you reinforce that on the back, just like we're going to do with our nautical rope. I'm using little craft paper. This is actually ribbon, and I glued that on there pretty well, some burlap ribbon. And that's it, this is all done. And I love the way that it turned out. It looks so cute. I have it in my living room. You can hang it on the wall, on the front door. You can set it on a shelf. I think it turned out so great. What do you guys think? Which one of these were your favorite projects? What are you guys working on for Valentine's Day? I think this might be my last Valentine's video. So I'll be back next week or on Friday actually with some more farmhouse stuff. If you haven't subscribed, I hope that you will. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, you guys. Bye-bye.